Man, we've got some inception. Yep, inception in the Bitcoin chart. Can Bitcoin confirm this breakout from its descending broadening wedge to then confirm the bounce of its long-term downward trend? If that doesn't make sense, make sure you stay tuned to the very end because we're going to walk through the Bitcoin chart very slowly. I'm going to show you the technical patterns I'm seeing at the charts and some key levels. But today we're up 1%. All coins are having a nice little bounce today. Could this mean that maybe some of this macroeconomic uncertainty starting to settle down. We're going to cover off what's going on with the Ukraine crisis, what's going on with interest rates. So hit up the like button, subscribe and enjoy this update. As always, please support NordVPN who have been kind enough to offer all of you guys 70% off a two-year plan uh, to get yourself set up on a VPN. It's an absolute no-brainer of a deal, guys. I use a VPN every single day and I completely recommend you guys to use one. I was using NordVPN well before I mentioned them here in this video. It's just a basic to have yourself set up set up on a VPN. It's also useful if you want to watch Netflix shows from other countries or play games with people in different countries. Uh, super useful in other aspects, but definitely for crypto, I always use a VPN when I'm logging into any of my exchanges. It's a basic for the toolkit of a crypto investor. Now let's get straight into the charts here, guys. Because What we can see here is on the hourly, we are in, you remember yesterday's video, I mentioned we we're in a descending broadening wedge, okay? So it's a descending pattern here. Your wedge between this upper line and bottom line and you're hoping for a breakout to the upside. And you remember in yesterday's video, I mentioned that the statistical probability is that 72% of the time on average, when monitoring this pattern, you will break out to the upside. And indeed, today we did get the breakout here on the hourly candle. Nice big breakout with decent volume of this. Are we now coming down to get a retest before heading higher? That's the question we need to keep an eye on now. Normally, it's very normal to get a retest of the pattern. And then what you do is when you break the previous high here, that's when you enter your trade, if you were trading this on the short-term basis. But for our purposes, if we just want to keep an eye on this for the long-term basis to see if we could recover, this is the level we want to get to. We want to see, can we get a bounce from this horizontal line we've got here at 38.405 as an important support level? Or even if we need to come a little bit lower, just to bounce off the top of this teal-colored uh, descending wedge, that's perfectly fine as well. Your technical price target takes you to the top of the wedge, which will bring you roughly between 40 to 41,000, okay? So that's what the technical price target is. Now, as always, even when I mentioned this pattern to you yesterday, we have to take this with a pinch of salt. You know this channel is focused up around bringing you technicals, but trying to then weigh up the fundamentals and the macroeconomic elements. And that's what hopefully you guys appreciate about this channel is I'm bringing the two. Not many channels out there are trying to merge the two. You find technical analysts who are just focused on technical analysts analysis and they'll bring up 10 different chart patterns and seven different indicators but they don't know what's happening with interest rates okay and then the other way you find some macro economist who knows exactly what's going to happen can tell you all the historical movements of interest rates in every single world war but they can't match that up with a chart pattern to give you a good entry point at a retracement or at a support line or understanding how the pattern marries up with that so what are we seeing in the market well if we head over to the markets we can see that it's being taken in its stride, I hate to say it. I mean, let's reflect on what's happened. What's actually happened is we've had an action of war. We've had the violation of international law, and we've seen that, in essence, this is an invasion, right, according to what's going on. So, in essence, we should be looking at the market, and has it priced that in? Has it reacted? And you can see here the Europe indices here are pretty much flat, Okay, flat across the board, FTSE, DAX, CAX, all pretty much flat. And if we look at the US markets, we've opened up pretty much flat on the Dow Industrial Index. You've got the S&P slightly flat as well, and NASDAQ 0.4% down, okay, so slightly down. And the things which are moving, as we'd expect, are things like oil. Okay, oil is having a massive move. Okay, so big movements to the upside on oil, which we would expect given the geopolitical tensions. But does this now mean that the market has priced this in, or is it just a bit of a relief? That's what we have to monitor because this is the hourly chart. But what I want to do now is I'm going to zoom out to the daily chart. And on the daily chart, what we'll notice is we're in a bigger, excuse the mess of all these lines, guys, but we're in a bigger descending broadening wedge okay this is a wedge too and you'll notice that that's what we broke out from is the top of this wedge and we've just played around with cpi and ukraine invasion and now we've come back down to retest this long-term trend line it was drawn red previously i've just colored it white for this video just to give you a better idea of the colors and you can see it a bit more clearly so the question is are we getting a retest 
before bouncing. And the last two daily candles are suggesting maybe that's the case. And this is what we need to watch out for. If we now can start climbing up above these important levels, and particularly 40,000 and then the 41,000 here, then we can start recovering this and then we can start feeling confident. But the major, major level on the daily chart is we're not excited about this until we get past the rejection point. You can see this was labeled for a long time, guys. This was the key rejection point. And at the time, even though the rest of this had not played out at the time, I remember this being the key rejection point. And that is why I took the time to label this, because we knew that this was an important level. You can see the power of the wick, which is the technical analysis uh, language for the sellers saying you're not getting through this level. Okay, and that wick is what brought, to, brought this to my attention. Say, hang on a second. There is a lot of sell pressure at this level. So if and until we can't clear this level here, let's call it 45,800. You could round it up to 46 if you want. We're still in this downtrend. Okay, we have to respect this downward trend we are in. And until we break that, we're not clear of that yet. But heading into the hourly chart back again, let's take things step by step. In order to win this small battle, we've got to retest. And we've got to bounce higher. We've got to break above this high here. Okay, so we've got to break above this high where we just got rejected here. That's 39.279. Then we need to get to the top of our wedge. Okay, top of the wedge takes you to 41,000. Then you can start your journey back up towards the, the neckline of our M pattern. Remember, this was the M pattern that broke down. Okay, this was that M pattern. Now, this is the neckline sitting at 41.659. Then we can start to regain that. When we can regain that, then we can work towards our 46K target. Hopefully, that gives you guys a good understanding of the levels we're looking out for here on the Bitcoin chart. And that we do have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do here to the upside. And my, you know, like I've said for a long time now, we've got a lot going on between now and this line here, which is the 10th of March, we get our February CPI reading. And then on the 16th of March, the big one, the big FOMC meeting where we're expecting our first interest rate hike. And the question is going to arise, what are we going to get? Is it going to be a single increase of 0.25% or is it going to be a double or even worse? And I think one positive to take out of what's happened from Ukraine and the Russia crisis, and we've seen that the US have gone ahead and um, you know initiated all their sanctions, their first tranche of sanctions. We know the way san sanctions work, particularly with a power like Russia, will lead to oil prices going up, pet fuel prices going up for the American consumers, for UK consumers. The Boris Johnson announced similar sanctions. Uh, you'll feel that across Europe. And naturally, that is going to lead to more inflation, increase in transportation costs, and therefore increase in cost to the consumers. So we've already got this bonfire of inflation caused by excess printing and COVID. And now you've put a little bit more gasoline off sanctions. It's going to hurt the wallets, okay? So that's not going to help. But what it will help is the fact that therefore the Fed may say, hang on a second, we can't go so extreme with our printing, okay? So that's what we need to keep an eye on is do they then say, okay, we don't want to shock the markets right now. There's so much going on. Do we go in with just a definitely just a flat 0.25 increase? And you can see the sentiment here in the market has reflected that. The market is very clever. And this Fed rate monitor tool gives you an idea that now only 33% of the market has priced in a double rate hike of 0.5%. OK, this was much higher when we were monitoring it just a week ago. OK, so now the market is already clocked on to the fact that, OK, very unlikely now that Biden comes out with aggressive hawkish tonality when the market is already on the back foot given the Ukraine crisis. So definitely an interesting one there. Now, a few more things to look at. Mexico. Could the Mexico senator be the next to introduce Bitcoin as legal tender in the bill this year? Interesting tweet here by Bitcoin Magazine. We know El Salvador have adopted Bitcoin. Could there be another one? These are the kind of things that now suddenly, could we start seeing some positive catalysts, some good fundamental catalysts, which could give us the rope that we need to climb out of this little ditch that we're in here on Bitcoin. Also, this, this tweet was very important. I thought I'd bring this up for you guys. Shout out to Justin Bennett at Justin Bennett FX. Most retail expects 30K Bitcoin. Many are waiting for 20K Bitcoin. Those same people also assumed 100K Bitcoin was guaranteed last year. Retail rarely gets what it wants. Absolutely, guys. And you've heard me say things along these lines, right? Be fearful when others are greedy. Be greedy when others are fearful. Like when the market thinks uh, it's at a top, you're pretty much at a bottom. And when the market thinks you're at a bottom, you're pretty much at a top. So 
that's that's how it works we need to be doing the opposite of what people are doing and so if the general consensus is that oh we're going to fall down to 20 i feel pretty confident at that point right because you know you saw the video i made yesterday when everybody when the whole market was doom gloom i made a video on bitcoin yesterday explaining why i'm still so bullish for this next period of time and then another thing i just wanted to kind of wrap up on was this Really interesting article here. Well, not super interesting, but the case for Bitcoin as digital gold is falling apart, right? We've spoken about this for a long time, guys, but this article finally cottons on. Well done, well done, CNBC, for kind of keeping up with the things we were saying many, many weeks ago. And I don't have an editorial team. I do it myself. But we said that Bitcoin has been trading as a risk on asset, okay? Very simple. When risk goes off, Bitcoin is sold off. It's correlated to the NASDAQ. It's correlated to the S&P. And finally, they've cottoned onto this and they drew a pretty chart showing that. Very nice, CNBC. But what was interesting was this. And if you looked at it, in fact, gold has actually been outperforming Bitcoin lately, okay? And then they show this interesting graph. And it, was, it just goes to show the agenda that people will go to. Now, I know this because I studied maths at university. And I remember there being a specific module in stats of how people can manipulate data based on the graphics that they use and uh, this is this is a classic example here right look at the graphics that they used that most people the uneducated eye the untrained eye who's glancing through this article maybe they don't have time they're sipping their coffee they're traveling they go okay look at the gold movement look at the bitcoin movement but look at the scales <laughs> why does nobody read the scales bitcoin has gone from here okay five thousand all the way up to 60 sixty seven thousand on this chart right and then gold has just gone from 1300 to a high of 2100 it's not even a double so it's it's ludicrous how they make you and then it's just gone sideways here it's just gone sideways completely here so look there's an agenda we know there's an agenda we know bitcoin's still immature it's still got some work to do it's still in its embryonic early stages so people just need to cut it some slack it will eventually become the the hedge against the financial markets as we see it we know that i mean here look they they say that as well a key investment case for bitcoin is deteriorating as geopolitical uncertainty and rising inflation hammer cryptocurrency prices uh, Bitcoin bulls also see cryptocurrency as a safe haven asset that can serve as a hedge against global economic uncertainty and increasing prices. Yeah, it will eventually, but it's more of a hedge against the fiat currency and the existing establishment breaking apart. When it breaks apart, and if it breaks apart eventually, then you'll see that happen. Going, you know, the Ukraine issue is just a small thing. It's not, it's not just a, it's not a complete defensive asset, right? Bitcoin. That's not what people are saying here. Uh, so they just need to give Bitcoin a chance to kind of mature out so there you have it guys that is a wrap for today uh interesting uh, pattern forming in the bitcoin chart we got to monitor that can we get the retest off the broadening wedge on the hourly chart that will then help us bounce off the long-term downward trend on the daily chart but obviously we've got to keep an eye on the news any shocks i still expecting a lot of volatility between now and march the 16th i hold that position firmly i've spoken about that before so let's keep an eye on that let's you know i think now the most important thing is if you're holding like i am continue to hold right don't panic there's not invest there's not financial advice don't panic um build conviction in your highest plays go back to basics if you've got a little bit of cash on the side continue to buy those dips in your favorite plays and the reality is just don't try to time the market you've seen even in this mini bounce today how quickly some of your favorite altcoins sprung up how quickly they can move you're going to miss 10 15 percent trying to time your entries back in so when the rest of the market thinks oh wait we're going to see a 20k bitcoin chances are retail investors don't always get what they want as always guys hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do smash up the like button and subscribe really does help me out a lot also don't forget to check out nordvpn links in the description go support them 70 percent off coupon code oh man you need yourself set up on a vpn guys absolute no-brainer thanks for watching what i'm going to do at the end of this video is i'm going to link up the video in the top right to yesterday's video really important that you watch that one the bitcoin video from yesterday it didn't get many views go watch that because i did explain a lot of the reasons that for why the next few weeks i'm super bullish on bitcoin and it was an in-depth video on the psychology and some of the more fundamental points on bitcoin so do watch that video thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one